From Hollywood, the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton, with Ozzie Nelson and his music, Harriet Hilliard and Wonderful Smith. <laughs> Ozzie Nelson and his band. And now, here is Metro Golden Mayor's newest comedy find, the star of our show, Red Skelton. <laughs> Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Red, you look a little tired tonight. What have you been doing? Well, I've been doing my Thanksgiving shopping in one of those supermarkets. <laughs> supermarkets? Yeah, that's a push cart that got a break. <laughs> You know, all the Hollywood celebrities go there. I go there just to see them. Bob yes. Hope, Viver McGee and Molly and Burns and all. They were all there this week. Say, Red, were they busy while you were there? Yeah, they were so busy. And what a crowd. I bought a pound of grapes, and when I came out, I had a gallon of wine. <laughs> oh, by the way, Red, did that earthquake we had the other night, did that damage the market you go to? Yeah, I was there at the time. And you know all the beans on one side of the store? Uh-huh. And all the corn on the other side? Yeah. Well, 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 what happened about the earthquake? In the middle, suck it tag. <laughs> <laughs> say, some of those supermarkets are really particular, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I'll say they are. The one I go to, I walked in the other day and I says, give me some lamb chops without panties. And the guy looked at me and he says, how old are you, bub? Hiya, Red. Oh, hello, Harriet. Say, did you enjoy going shopping with me in that supermarket? Oh, I certainly did. But tell me, why do you always go shopping in your bare feet? Well, you can never tell when some lady's going to drop her change. I was a little embarrassed running around that store, though, in my bare feet. It's such a high-class place, you know. Oh, I'll say it's a high-class place. It's the first market I've ever seen with a cigarette girl. Yeah, she was cute, too. But I thought she was a little bold. Yeah, so did I, going around yelling, Cigars, cigarettes, Hillside 4185. <laughs> that was probably her license number, you know. Gee, the price of food certainly has gone up, hasn't it? Oh, I don't think so. I got a dozen eggs for 65 cents. You paid 65 cents for a dozen eggs? Yeah, that's all. For 27 cents more, I could have got the yolks, too. <laughs> oh, and the stores are so crowded that everybody's shopping for Thanksgiving. Yeah, you know, I went to this store to get a turkey, and I had to stand in line an awful long time. Well, you weren't the only one who had to wait a long time, were you? No, there was a pilgrim in front of me. <laughs> only comes once a year, if you're stubborn about it. Yeah. <laughs> Hiya, Red. Hiya. Uh, how are you, Ozzy? Say, did you go uh, shopping at the supermarket? <laughs> no, I have jokes about the Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. <laughs> now, you were, too, in that supermarket because I saw you in the vegetable department. Were you shopping? No, I was just grazing. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Red, it's amazing the fruits and vegetables you can get at this time of the year. Oh, say, you know how the California people are always bragging about how big their vegetables are? Yeah. Well, I fooled them. How? Well, I pointed to some watermelon. I said, give me some of them cucumbers. <laughs> the guy says, them ain't cucumbers, them's peas. <laughs> 
Well, I like the shop too, Red, but I sort of have to pick out what I want. Yeah, well, you know, that kind of stuff got me in trouble in a market once. Well, how do you mean? Well, they had a big sign that says, Don't pinch the peaches. A blonde came in, and that's all I remember. <laughs> Smokers, no other cigarette on the market can match Raleigh's golden rich tobacco blend. And it's this exclusive blend that makes the big difference. That makes Raleigh so noticeably smoother and milder. And why is it called a golden rich blend? Well, first, because only the golden tobaccos go into Raleigh's. Tobaccos that any expert will tell you are choicer, more expensive. And for a distinctive richness, no less than 31 different types of the best domestic was used, blended by the skilled hands of master craftsmen. Yes, Raleigh cigarettes excel where it makes the big difference, in the tobacco blend. And remember, Raleigh's give you valuable coupons, redeemable for over 70 luxury premiums. Friends, it pays to smoke Raleigh's, the pack with a coupon on the back. Raleigh cigarettes. <laughs> Of course you recognize, why don't we do this more often? In the next chorus, Harriet portrays a very, very young lady who has just spent an unfortunate afternoon with her boyfriend. Why don't we do this more often? Those were my first thoughts that day. You told me such pretty things again and again. You're not a child, you know you're practically ten. You acted like such a big shot. When you ordered ice cream cones for two You didn't have a dime I had to pay the bill I don't like you and I always will And you say, why don't we do this more often? Well, why don't you act your age, Superman? Well, I guess trouble knows no age, Lynn. Harriet and I had a weird experience one evening It all started harmlessly We were driving along in our car, and she turned to me and said, Why don't we do this more often? Just what we're doing tonight. Gee, but it's great to get the fresh country air. Let's get off the beaten path and just drive anywhere. We'll ride right on till we're tired. And stop at some quiet hotel. A cozy little inn, a spot nobody knows The kind you only see in moving picture shows Why we don't do this more often Ozzy can tell you the rest Why don't we do this more often The memory gives me a fright Our hotel was the Biltmore So I was told It was built more like a... Well, it was plenty old. When I woke up the next morning, I phoned the clerk and I said, Hey, how do you get hot water in this chicken coop? He said, go down to the dining room and order soup. That's why we don't do this more often. After what happened that night, can you blame us? After what happened that night That was Ozzy and Harriet singing their own special version of Why Don't We Do This More Often. Uh, well, come in. Howdy, Mr. Scout. Well, wonderful Smith. Say, what can I do for you, wonderful? Well, I wonder if I could get an advance on my last week's salary. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to buy a turkey. Now look, wonderful. We've been on the, you've been on the air with me for seven weeks, brother, and I can read you like a book. You don't want no turkey. The only thing you're interested in is gambling and clothes. You'll find some women on page three. <laughs> <laughs> Say, wonderful. What are you doing on Thanksgiving Day? I've been invited to dinner over to my gal's house. Oh, swell. Well, then you better brush up on your etiquette. Huh? Table manners. You know, I was talking to Hattie McDaniel's about you. Said you were over to her house for dinner. You ate all the corn off the cob, held the cob up in the air, and says, Hey, Hat, put some more beans on this stick. 
And she did. <laughs> Maybe I ought to get some advice on this etiquette stuff. Please yeah. give me the phone, Mrs. Skelton. Help yourself. It's right there. Hello, operator? I'd like to speak to Miss Stump. Stump? Say, for tips on etiquette, you should call Emily Post. I know, but on my salary, I can only afford Stump. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Miss Stump? Uh, this is wonderful, Smith. Miss Stump, I'm going over to my gal's house for Thanksgiving dinner, and I don't know exactly what to do. Oh, yes, ma'am, I is dressing. It's the law, you know. <laughs> she means, is it formal? Well, this is my best suit I got, Mr. Skelton. How do you like it? Well, that jacket's a little long, isn't it? Uh, that's the way I had it made. The pants ain't ready yet. <laughs> What'd you say, Miss Stump? How's my table manners? Mm. Oh, I's a gentleman. Oh, no, Miss Stump. I wouldn't reach for anything. I've been to that house before. <laughs> <laughs> Getting anything off of that table is like putting your hand in a meat grinder. <laughs> Only difference with a meat grinder, you get your arm back. <laughs> well, goodbye, Miss Stump. Well, see you later, Mr. Skelton. Okay, wonderful. Goodbye there now. <laughs> so wonderful's going out to dinner, huh? Yes. Oh, I almost forgot. Listen, gang, you're all invited over to my house for a Thanksgiving dinner. Well, oh, right. that's wonderful. Right. Now, look, you can all bring your wives, bring your friends, and if anybody knows a turkey, you can bring him, too. <laughs> Say, what do we do after dinner, Red? Well, we'll play games like the last time. Okay, but this time you wash and I'll dry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, sure will be fun to go out for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. I hate to stay at home and eat in the kitchen. We got mice. You got mice? No, we can't afford them. <laughs> Say, you know, I think Thanksgiving Day is really a lot of fun, but there's a lot of people who think it should be given back to the Indians. And to prove what I mean, tonight I'm going to show the different ways that people spend Thanksgiving. At first, we'll start off with a football coach giving a pep talk to his family before going out to dinner. <laughs> Now listen, gang. I want to talk turkey. This year we're going to a kickoff over at Aunt Lucy's. Last year they were over here on our home grounds. And what happened? They got all the white meat, all the dark meat. We wound up behind... Anyhow, we wound up behind them. Now this year, I want you to get in there and block those potatoes. Because after dinner's over, all that counts is who's got the most bones. <laughs> now we're going over there and eat. We're going to eat hard. There's one thing I want you to remember. As soon as you hear dinner's served, I want you to spill coffee all over the tablecloth. Uh, uh, what for, Pop? I understand they're no good on a wet ground. <laughs> Step up here at the blackboard. Now, what do you do when Uncle Wilbur tries to carry a drumstick for a first helping? I take out Uncle Wilbur. Right. <laughs> now, remember, fight clean. No gravy stains this year. And when you come through that cranberry sauce, don't come out looking like the Crimson Tide. <laughs> hey, Pop, what about me? What do I do? Well, Joe, you're the shortest, so you stand on the table and run interference. <laughs> what do we do if Uncle Al intercepts a pass and snags one of the wings? Well, we go into our wingback formation. I've had this mob in strict training, Paul. They've been on a nine-day diet for nine weeks. Oh, one-man famine. <laughs> All right, gang, now everybody around the table. We're going to try play 43. Okay. Here, here, here. You're offside there, son. Your fork went over the line of spinach. <laughs> But I think we're all set now. I'm in. I want you to go in there and eat. Cut, slice, don't stop to chew, just swallow. <laughs> okay, Pop. We'll be in there munching. Fine. Now up to the shower, men. Get in your eating jackets. And when that whistle blows, I want you to come out biting. <laughs> children, children, I'm ashamed of you. Stampeding like that? It's a lucky thing I got out first. <laughs> I'll pick up your mother. <laughs> oh, I'm all right. I can eat 
sleep with one hand. Mm. Tell me, Pa, confidentially, do you think we'll have a chance to carve a name for ourselves this Thanksgiving? With this squad, we're cinched to wind up in the gravy bowl. <laughs> We have the people who buy their turkey three weeks early so they can fatten them up. <laughs> then comes the time to dress it, and this is what usually happens. Clem, where are you? I'm out here. Is the turkey ready? No, we're talking things over. Clem, you've got to do something about that Adam's apple. It's getting bigger every day. You're looking at the turkey. This is me over here. <laughs> You gotta stop picking on my Adam's apple. It ain't that big, you know. <laughs> oh, they went in the car again. Well, hurry up and dress that turkey. You know, I hate to kill him. We've had him so long, he seems like one of the family. Well, maybe so on your side of the family, not mine. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at him set up. I'm telling you, he's almost human. Look at him. You throw a stick and he fetches it back like a dog. I'm telling you, he's almost human. Can't we eat something else? I never liked turkey mush anyhow. Well, last year you got the best part. Oh, yeah. Well, I still don't believe I got the nose. <laughs> and if it was... Let's not get nosy again this year, Bob. Now you're going to kill that turkey. No, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Aw, here. Put your head on my shoulder. I can't kill him. You're crying. Oh, it's nothing. I know, but you're putting my cigarette out. (laughs) Give me that gun. I'll do like the pilgrims did. I'll go out and shoot our dinner. Look, there's a wild turkey flying over now. Give me that gun. I'll get him. Turkey. Wait, I'll ask the pilot. He's getting out now. and the boys playing Take the A Train. And very good, too, if they do it. I mean, uh... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, say, Ozzy, come over here. I got something, uh... I got a story for you. Oh, fine, Red. Let's have it. Well, now, here's the way it is, Ozzy. Both are lined up on the gridiron, see? All set to go. 
Oh, boy, what happens next? Well, they turn on the heat and things begin to really cook. Oh, boy. Now, it's three down. I was hungry for more. There was two more coming up. Now, uh, wait a minute. Uh, if it's third down, there'd only be one more coming up. Any football fan knows that. Football? I'm talking about a swell waffle iron I got with my Raleigh coupons. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, there can be no misunderstanding about that electric waffle iron you get with Raleigh coupons. It's really a beauty. And friends, there's a vacuum coffee brewer you can get to go along with it. Yes, and gorgeous silverware, too. These are only a few of the Raleigh premiums. There are over 70 more all-nationally advertised merchandise. You'll find many things you've been wanting for a long time, but just hesitated to spend that extra money for. And you can get all of them as a plus value by just smoking Raleigh cigarettes and saving the valuable coupons that come on the back. Now, we have a catalog which pictures in full color all the Raleigh premiums, and it's free. For your copy, just drop a penny postal card to Raleigh in care of the station to which you are listening. And friends, tonight, switch to Raleigh cigarettes. Raleigh's golden rich blend gives you a tastier, a far more enjoyable smoke. Ask for the pack with a coupon on the back. Raleigh Cigarettes. Say, so, you know, that's very good advice, Truman. Hey, Red. Yeah? What are some more things that usually happen on Thanksgiving Day? Well, what I get a kick out of most of all is the youngsters. So we'll do that next. We have a mean little kid, you know, who really has a time on Thanksgiving. <laughs> this little brat messes around the kitchen getting in everybody's way, see? <laughs> so I'll tell you what, Harriet. You be my mother and I'll be the little boy. All right, right Red. <laughs> mommy, Mommy, we are going to starve. What are you talking about, Junior? Well, you told Pop to dress that turkey. Well, after he scalded him and picked all the feathers off of him, he hopped out of the pan and went away. Oh, Junior, why do you tell stories like that? The turkey has been in the oven for hours. <laughs> I knew I would find out where he was. <laughs> Gee, you know, Mom, I'm kind of sorry we killed that old turkey. You are? Yeah. He put up a great fight, though, didn't he? Three times he took the act away from Pop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ma. Yes? You think Pop will be out of the hot pit by Christmas? Yes, but he won't be able to shave his neck for a while. <laughs> now go away. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Can I have this, Mom? Put mm-hmm. that celery down. Well, I like celery. <laughs> Company! Oh! I'm hungry. Could I have a piece of jelly bread? Sure, here's the bread. You'll have to spread the jelly on your face yourself. Yeah. Junior, stop eating that table. <laughs> Junior, I told you to stop. Oh, you broke my arm. You broke my arm. <laughs> you hit me and broke my arm. I didn't even touch you. I hit my own arm. Oh, you... Did you hurt yourself, Mom? <laughs> No, now you sit here on this stool. Okay. You're a bad boy. I know it. You're a very, very bad boy. Yeah, I say I am. Last night I set fire to Eddie Peabody. <laughs> Mommy. What is it? Can I have Veronica Lake for Christmas? <laughs> I thought you wanted electric trains. What do you think I am, a dope? <laughs> Listen, you just sit on your stool and be quiet. Oh, why? Right. Mommy! Yes? Where'd I come from? Be quiet. Did Buck Rogers bring me? <laughs> no, you were left on the doorstep in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, here comes the kitty cat. Here, kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. I bet he's hungry, too. Here, kitty. Here, kitty. Junior, stop pulling that cat's tail. I ain't pulling it, Mom. I get holding on. He doing the pull. <laughs> oh, look. Yeah. Hey, Mommy, look. He tail here, but he ain't. <laughs> oh, here. Oh, you're just kidding. Well, here, I want you to do me a favor. Yeah? Take this pumpkin pie next door to Mrs. Denny. Yeah? And be careful. It's got whipped cream on the top. Oh, boy. And hurry back, because dinner's ready. Oh, boy. Boy, don't that look good, huh? Junior, get your fingers out of that pie. I'll carry it like a bowling ball. <laughs> oh, that kid is driving me crazy. His father's got to talk to him. 
And I'll bet the old boy will learn plenty. <laughs> well, hello, Mommy. I hit back. Can I go practice on the piano now? What am I saying? <laughs> No, your dinner's ready. Oh, never mind, dinner. I ain't very hungry. Somehow, I don't feel very hungry. I don't feel good. I think I got acid indigestion. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, that trouble. Hello? Oh, hello, Mrs. Denny. What? Uh-oh. Well, I just sent that pie over with Junior. I better get some roadmap. <laughs> Oh, I'm beginning to get it. I'll call you back, Mrs. Denny. Junior, come here. Put that shillelagh down and I will. Junior, come here. You'll never take me alive! Junior, did you eat that whole pumpkin pie? No, only half of it, the punk part. Well, why didn't you eat all of it? Well, what do you think I am, a pig? <laughs> What did you do with the half you didn't eat? Well, I put some of it in this pot and put a hunch of it over in this pot. And... Why, you... Oh, what'd you do that for? I had a hunch in that pot, too. <laughs> talking quite a lot tonight, you know. Yeah, that's right, Brad. Well, I think Turnabout is fair play, so here is a word from our companion sponsor. Yes, gentlemen, Turnabout is fair play. If you're kind to your pipe, your pipe will be kind to you. And the best favor you can do both is to smoke Sir Walter Raleigh. You see, Sir Walter Raleigh is extra cool burning, more even smoking, right down to the bottom of the bowl. That's why a Sir Walter Raleigh pipe load is sweeter... Cooler, milder. But add to that the fact that Sir Walter Raleigh gives you a smooth, nut-like flavor and a pleasing he-man aroma, and you've really got something. You've got Sir Walter Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco of America. If you paid $100 a pound, you couldn't get finer. Yet Sir Walter Raleigh costs no more than ordinary tobacco. So tonight, ask for Sir Walter Raleigh. We'll all be back at the same time next week. Red Skelton, Ozzie Nelson and his music, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and your announcer, Truman Bradley, who wishes you a most pleasant Thanksgiving. And ladies and gentlemen, I honestly believe we can all help to make this coming Thursday a day of real Thanksgiving for liberty-loving people all over the world if we make an extra effort to buy more United States savings stamps and defense bonds. And now, here's Red Skelton again. Thank you very much, Brad. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We're not a little early. We're not a little late. We're just right. Goodbye now. Happy Thanksgiving. Red Skelton is heard on this program through the courtesy of the Metro Golden Mayor Studios. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.